it didn't make noise? No. You mean, did they... Like, it, it went off, but it didn't make any noise. Is it on mute? No. Oh. Well, okay. Well, so that's the work of... Was it hard? Was it hard to work today? Was it hard to work today? Was it... No? Sometimes, you know, when the weather changes and it gets dark early, we experience difficulty. No? No? Brian, how do you do? It's hard to start. It's hard to start. And then, once you, or for me, once today, once I got in it, I was like, oh, there it is. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so sometimes it's hard to start. Yeah. yeah. It's like cold <laughs> or dark. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, it was like, I know. It's like, oh. It was like, yeah, I want to be at home. Yeah. It's over. Woo. Anybody else have a hard, a difficult time starting? No? Everyone's like, yeah, yeah, and hard starting. And then you just kind of like, have you ever, did anybody have any snow uh, wherever you went over the, yeah? Yeah, where'd you go? Massachusetts. Massachusetts. They had snow up there? Oh, that's a little excessive. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I told you to stop. Anybody else? Any snow? Where you went? No? It's like a snow, I was just thinking of a snowman, watching my son make a snowman in my mother's yard over Thanksgiving. And it's, you know, I mean, you know, you the snowman, you know that you roll. Has anybody ever made a snowman that way? You take the little thing, you roll it. You know, it's hard to get started, but, you know. <laughs> Or like shoveling snow, did anybody shovel snow? Did you shovel any snow, Melissa? Over the, did you shovel snow? Oh, I had to shovel snow because the guys didn't show up or something. And we were having, my clients was delivered. Anyway, it was just your eyes was shoveling snow thinking about writing, like wow, this is just like writing. So, if you like, you know, right, isn't it? It's like a long road, it's unmarked. It's uncomfortable. You're in some weird position. And you have to like do a little tiny bit. And I was there for like an hour and a half doing that. It was amazing. And I had a deadline because there came the delivery truck. And I didn't get it faster. And then my mother could have her washing machine. Or not yeah, washing machine. Because she ordered. So it's all good. Anybody have any questions about writing? Real writing, not shoveling snow? Or... Yes. Well, you were there, because you raised your hand first. Yes, what's your name? Nina. Nina? Yes. Oh, hey, Nina. Am I going to do this at all? Yes. <laughs> yes. Right, okay. Um, so, this is sort of a broader question, but how do, you, how do you figure out what's good feedback and bad feedback? How do you figure out what's going to be useful for you and, like, not... Uh -huh. so, yeah, that's a great question. How do you figure out what's good feedback and what's bad feedback? How do you figure out what's good feedback and what's bad feedback? Yeah, and if you're so if, assuming if you're doing some kind of creative project or something. Okay, because like, yeah, because there's like, you could say bad feedback makes you feel bad, but that's not really true, right? Sometimes you get a really smart note that makes you feel awful, but then you didn't think of it yourself, right? Or, oh, it's gonna be so much work, right? Oh, to fix, to change that character, oh my God. You know what I mean? So it makes you feel awful thinking of the task ahead that you have to do. So, and good feedback, yeah, great, hey, I love, love your work, I love, love it, just love it. Yeah, 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 that's really good. It makes you feel like, oh, this is fun. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're just shining me on, you know? You're just blowing smoke on my behind, right? So. That's not necessarily good feedback, but that might like make you feel good, right? So it's tricky. Does anybody have a, a clue how to tell what's good feedback from bad feedback? So what you do, it, it's like the sort of like um, time test, you know? You, t you listen to the person's feedback, right? You a couple of things. You consider the source. So. If it's like someone who is consistently giving you like stupid, like, oh, I got it. everyone's gonna hate that, okay? That's like bad feedback. Everyone 
is going to hate that. If it, a couple things. So if it's what we call black and white thinking, if it's extreme, right? Like it's great, it's great, uh, don't you? That might not be the best feedback. But if everyone's going to hate that is not good feedback. So if it's extreme, right? Then you consider the source. If it's coming from someone who consistently gives you feedback that's not helpful, okay? Or someone who wants to see their notes in your work, right? I want you to change your hair to purple. Why don't you change your hair to purple? I mean, come, come on, right? That kind of person, okay? Then there's other feedback that you have to give the test of time. So you get feedback, you maybe take notes, right? You're taking notes when you're getting the feedback, are you? Okay, and you, you sleep on it, right? You might talk it over with a trusted friend. Hey, somebody read my screenplay, for example, my novel, whatever, and they said that it, it, they, they just, uh, they thought the main character was crazy and totally unrelatable. You know, what do you think? You've read the novel. You know, what do you think? You, know, you bounce it off a trusted friend, okay? And it's really finding out what resonates strongly and truthfully to you, and that's good feedback. Does that make sense? So it's not just feedback from a powerful person, right? Like an artistic director, an editor, or whatever. Right? It's feedback that resonates appropriately with you and what you want to do with your work. Okay? And always give it a sort of overnight. Don't start slashing and burning your screenplay or your novel or whatever based on some feedback you get from somebody without digesting it, right? Does that make sense? Same thing, good, you know, what's a good boyfriend, what's a good spouse, what makes a good meal, all the same things, right? Balanced, right? Something that's balanced. So you can apply those things to, to every category, so. It's helpful, because sometimes you don't know. Yeah, okay, that's a good question. You had a question. What's your name? Uh, Kimberly. Hey. Um, so, ripping off what you just said a while ago about shoveling snow being like writing, I've been yeah. thinking a lot about the ways we write that are not sedentary, right. you know, and how activity comes into play in our writing process. And I found some kind of golden tidbits where you talk about your Ashtanga study and the, the ritual and the physicality of the Ashtanga yoga practice in your, in your writing. And I'm just wondering, like, after 365 days of plays or with you and anything else that you've done, does Ashtanga come into play? Does, does yoga come into play? Or what other ways are you physical in the writing process? So different from what we all just did, it's like we're sitting down, we're, you know, we're writing, and it's like sure. this, this sure. solitude still process. Like, what ways do you move in your writing process? Oh, all the time. I mean, I used to move a lot more, and now I don't. I move more in my head. So I've taken all those years of movement while I write. I used to, like, dance around and writing. And I always try out movements with characters. If I'm talking about a character or working on a line or reading a line, I might write something and then try it out like that. So I would suggest that. Often when I'm stuck or I tell students when you're stuck, and you're having a really hard time with the character, and they're sitting there and they reread it. I've reread the draft six times, and I don't know what to do. I say, stand up, take the piece of paper, and walk around the room with it and read it. So there's that kind of thing. I mean, there are a lot of great writers who write, um, who have written standing up. Hemingway, I think, was one of them. You know, famously wrote standing up at his desk. I know he had other problems. <laughs> mm, yeah. Um, and I don't think he did yoga, so there. Um, but uh, he was a really good writer. Uh, <coughs> but um, I would say move around when you write, you know. I'm not a big, but I'm not saying that's the only way to write, you know. Um, I do a lot of yoga, I still do. But I do, I, I think that if you, so if you're feeling like a little sluggish in your writing, get up, stand up, walk around read your writing out loud. It doesn't have to be a play for you to want to read it out loud. It can be a novel, it can be a song. Try it out out loud, okay? Or even just reading it out loud. If you don't feel like standing up, just read it out loud. Actually let it go through your body, which is enough movement 
actually. You don't have to, you know, if you often write in public places, you don't need to make a, you know, a, sh a, a, sh a floor show of yourself. You know, I'm a writer, so I'm going to move around and I write, oh, please, sit down, sit down, be quiet, sit over there and write. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to make a big production out of it, but um, you might want to read it softly to yourself just to feel the language in your body. Okay, that's very, very, very helpful. Yeah, definitely movement. I do a lot of movement. I just don't move as much as I used to because I need to. I have all this like stored movement. So I just pretend I'm moving. This is what I was doing. I was pretending. So, yeah, he's just like. Not, not tonight. Oh, not. Tonight. Yes. I'm trying to figure out a lot of the projects that I'm working on right now are like research heavy, um, and I'm trying to balance when do I stop research and do the writing, do I do them in tandem, when do I know when I've done enough research to write, um, so I wonder if you have any thoughts about that. Yes, this is, it's a really good question, and we have it all the time. It might change from project to project. What's your name? Sandra. Sandra? Yeah. Hey, so I would say if you're thinking, oh, you know, I'm kind of, how long have you been researching for this project? Uh, well, on and off, like two years, but interviewing people. Right, right. So if you feel like, you know, or you feel like, I kind of want to take a do a little writing. <laughs> if you're feeling like that, so do some writing. And you can always circle back and do more research. Okay. Yeah. You can always write. Well, so for for that one, I have written oh, great. a piece that's still in progress, great. but I'm I'm now about to embark on a new one. Okay. That's gonna involve research, and I'm, oh, I see. I'm kind of like, do I want to wait another two years before beginning writing that one? Right. Um, or like, what is what should be a daily process in terms of researching and interviewing people and then putting things on the page? Right. Yeah. I would say write and research later. Maybe. Right? I mean, what can you have? Like, how much of a draft can you do without any research? Just say, I mean, I could, mix it, just to check I could it imagine. Out. We're not encouraging, you know, uh, you know, you can tell lies or, or <laughs> to, you know, oh my goodness, play fast and lose the facts. I mean, it might be America if you did. Yeah. No. up a little bit. Oh, see, when I, don't, just to free you up, um, jump in and start writing. Hey, what if this was happening? You know, have some fun and circle back around and do your research as you go. Okay? See if you could just start writing, have a good time, and, and do both at the same time. Like one day you have time to write, write. One day you have your research subjects, I know they're real people, so it's going to take a little bit of finagling you know, organizing your schedule and their schedule, so then you research, okay? And then you, but you, ah, I have an idea for a story, great. And maybe the, and the two will come together like a well-made drawer. You know, have you seen a well-made drawer? You know, dovetailing, you know, that beautiful arch of cabinetry, I suppose it's called, beautiful, yeah? So maybe, you know, or a beautiful floor that's beautifully laid, okay? So do that. Right. Right. Yeah, it's a rabbit hole that, you know, you can, I, I, would, I would say, yeah, just make up stuff. Make up stuff and then circle back around. And I, I remember, I remember really, really, really that you live in a country where it's okay. Oh, shit. <laughs> There's got to be an upside of this shit, man. There's got to be an upside. Yo, we're free. Free from telling who you want. Look at those. Just say whatever you want, yo. You know, right? Just say it in an exciting way. And tweet it. 
I tweet a lot in the middle of the night. That's, that's important. No, but you know, okay, so, no, but I, I feel like I don't want you to be in prison to your, you know, your own structure that has worked in the past. If you feel like you want to write, write. And see what you need to know. Then look at it and go, okay, does that make sense? Does that make sense? Does that make sense? You know? Okay? Yeah, sure. Yes, it makes sense. How do you do? Um, this is actually the question I had earlier when you looked at me, and I was just like, I'm not going to ask this now. Um, uh, me and a friend of mine were talking for a while about like how there's like a lot of glorification of depression, not that it's not a real disease or not that um, it's important to talk about, but just like you don't have a story unless it's like a sad one or something bad happened to you or like you're writing about something or creating something that's like somber. And so I was working on um, my piece recently and thinking like, man, like I'm a funny person. I like to laugh. Why isn't this like making me laugh? Or make, like why am I not having like enough fun in it? And I feel like um, how do you, how does one, um, get away from the tendency to be so serious? Cause like, I'll, like, I'll do something that's like strictly funny or I'll do something that's like strictly serious. And I'm like, I feel like I, I have multiplicity. Why don't my pieces have, or they do, but I only find them fun. Or like the things I find funny, not everybody else finds hilarious. So how do you become a funnier person? <laughs> Question. Alexis, how do you become a funnier? No, how, not, not like a funnier person. Like, like fun and like more somber subjects. Maybe how do you have person. more fun? Well, I, I mean, I, I have been accused of making merry with sad subjects. I mean, but to me, uh, the two exist simultaneously. To me, you know, like to me, slaves can laugh a lot. You know, and it doesn't have to be a slapstick, send up kind of thing. It can be an actual embracing of the situation. You know, um, I don't know. I would read. I would read, read writers that do that a lot. If you want to, if you want to do that, you know, that's the thing. If we have a, a a skill that we see in another writer or that we want to cultivate, you know, I would read that. I would read a lot of that writer or those writers that we say, wow, that's a that person is really good at that kind of thing, and I want to get better at that kind of thing, so we read those kinds of writers. I would suggest that. You know? You know? Just, you want to write like friends? No, it's just like, no, like, I'll be, I'll be what I, like, because what I, I like wit, and I like sarcasm, and I use it a lot, and I'm like, maybe that's not the, like, only way to do it, or maybe that's, like, um, keeping it, like, dark and like down low so like how do I like bring it up a little bit or just like because I'm not I'm not it's not to shy away from like the emotional quality of the situation but more like hey like there's there's a happy moments in this too like it doesn't have to be all like oh we're 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 in the dark now or we're really gonna delve into those emotions it's just oh there's like light in the well, then, then it's a question of specificity it doesn't sound like you're being specific then if you say oh well there's some some joyous moments in this story, then tell them. You see what I mean? I mean, you know, you know I mean, you, what, where are they specifically? Tell them specifically. Show them. You, you see what I'm saying? Because if you can look at a, a piece and go, oh, wait, wait a minute, why, why did I leave out that, that, and that? I think that you could, I, I do think that you can coexist easily. You know? And you look so serious. Anybody <laughs> else have a question? Yeah, what? I just, speaking to your question, uh, it's kind of like Chekhov. I love Chekhov because he just writes this human comedy, and it seems, I, I think many productions are done, and it's all so serious. But he has not written that. He has written the human comedy uh, and frailty, and it's so funny if it's done right. You know, it's the interpretation of it. So when you talk about, you said something about, uh, yeah, I think it's funny, but then some other, uh, the, they don't think it's funny. You know, you know, it's maybe it's in the interpretation rather than in um, how it it is uh, produced rather than it not be funny. You know, if you sense, wow, that's funny. You know. It's kind of like, what is it, I guess, 
the funniest line I thought, I, you know, I always laugh, which is, you know, I'm in mourning for my life. I mean, that's a really funny line, mm -hmm. you know, and I've seen so many productions where it's so heavy, and I think, oh my goodness, that's funny. Mm -hmm. So it's somebody to come out and just, you know, I mean, it's the, the extreme self-indulgent of being, <laughs> being yeah. a human being. Like, like I was, um, what was it, when I tried to watch The Walking Dead, there was this one, there's like in the, one of the first three episodes, like, they're trying to chop up this person. And like the guy's like, man, he had kids. Like looking through his wallet, like man, he had kids. Like he was a person. And then like like this character Glenn comes out of nowhere and is like, but he was also an organ donor. And then just starts chopping him. And that's stuff that I find funny and like nobody else seems to remember. And then I'm like, okay, maybe it's just I'll just find my crowd for my, my funny. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, you can find your crowd. Not to sweat it so much. <laughs> Anybody else? <laughs> Remind me of your name. Have you been here? Before? No, I haven't. You haven't? Ah, have I seen, maybe I've seen you on the street somewhere. Maybe. maybe. My name is Arlene. Arlene? Yes. Hey, Arlene. Hey. Um, so, when you think you're done and your gut says it done, it's done, and you've read it to a few people and they think it's done, is, are you done? <laughs> 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 That's really great. What, what do you think, Arlene? What do you think? I think I'm done, but I just want to say that. That's really great. So when you think you're done, and your gut says you're done, and you read it to a couple people, and they think you're done, are you done? So yeah, I think you've covered all the bases. I think, I think you got, you think you got your gut. You got some friends, <laughs> and now you're asking me. Yeah. Of course, I think you're. Of course, I think you're done. I mean, yeah. I, no, I say, of course, I think you're done. And I, I, I think that being done doesn't mean that you'll never change, tweak, or you know, reorganize another word, chapter, scene, you know, stanza, chord change, whatever. That doesn't mean that. Doesn't mean that you never have to think about it or look at it ever again. You know, but it means it's time to, to pass it on to the next round. You know? Congratulations. Oh, yeah, did you just finish something? Did you just finish something? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's great. And it also means you get to go out and, 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 and buy yourself something. Okay. That's part of it. That's part of it. You get to like buy yourself a present or at least pat yourself on the back. Uh, at least. I mean, if you, you know, if you're modest, the modest uh, among us. Oh, I, I was reminding this uh, student to this morning of um, a gesture that I started doing a long time ago in, uh, the, well, they call it, uh, well, no, we call it Myanmar. That's what we call it. Uh, they used to call it Burma a whole, a whole bunch of time ago, but now they call it Myanmar. So I was hanging out with some people over there, and I was saying, um, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And they were like, oh, yo, <laughs> we say thadu, thadu, thadu because they're primarily Buddhist society. And thadu, 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 uh, but we say, we can say thank you to the thing that's bigger than us, like high five your high power. Thank you to your comrades and colleagues. Thank you. And then thank you yourself. You pat yourself on the back. So you can at least do that. And it's, it's that doesn't cost anything. If you don't want to go out, you know, spend any money, it's cool. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good job. Thank you. So, Anybody else? Congratulations. Did you have a question, Ryan? Yeah. Uh, yes. I feel like, <clears throat> well, for me personally, the way I've been working over the years, I feel like I it clicked recently. I was like, oh, this is my voice. Oh, this is how I use language. Or this is like, this is how I try to communicate my thoughts to the world. And I was like, yeah. I was like, oh, I was like, oh, this is like, this is like what makes sense. Um, and I guess. This is like, I, it's like the repetitive question I feel like I have when I come here. Yeah. And it has to do with like, just making the time, making the practice and showing up for yourself. But I think when, I think maybe when you're I'm nervous that you're going to write something shitty or, and I think it's like when it's an, 
autobiographical thing and it feels so precious. Like how to give yourself, how to like maybe like let that go or how to give yourself permission to keep going forward and to like be kind to yourself about it and like trust this voice that you found. And in that, um, how to do that and also when you've been working on this thing for a chunk of time now, and this is, I think this is the question I always have about like, is it worth it? diving back into all of the work that led you to this moment. <laughs> I know. Or or to like or to trust yourself and give yourself permission and show up for yourself and go forward. Or or to or to dive back in and sort through like years of like you've asked me this question many times, but it's good, it's yeah. good because because Ryan's the type of person who um he'll come he'll walk up the mountain and, he, and sit and go, so, should I go through all my stuff or should I just start from where I am? And I'll say, thanks for asking, start from where you are, thank you. He'll go away, he'll come back, hi, should I go this way? It's good, it's very good because, I mean, maybe I'll just, just to have fun, I'll say the other answer. Uh, but I, I, I don't want to have fun. I'm like Alexis. I'm serious, yo. And these are serious times. Start where you are. Yeah. Start where you are. So this is the thing about, about writing shitty drafts and being kind to yourself, whether it's personal and autobiographical or, or not, or, or something historical that you're, you know, or something you have to research for. You always have to give yourself a huge amount of kindness when you're writing, right? Whether it's coming from your personal story or a person, a story of somebody you read in some history book, right? Or stories that you, of people you've interviewed. You always have to give yourself a huge amount of kindness and compassion, right? When you're writing, okay? So give yourself a huge dose of that, and then put on your bravest outfit, you know? And whatever, if you want to be like Kimberly's thinking and dance around or when you're writing, or you want to sit down and read the tukas and sit your ass down in this somewhere and plant yourself and write, I would continue from where you are right now. Somehow just keep going. There is so, there's so much power in just moving forward and getting to the end. Have you gotten to the end of the draft? Okay, but you will. You will because you're more focused and grounded than I've ever seen you right now. Maybe it's because you're wearing that big coat. <laughs> but you're more like planted. Just keep going. That's the only way you're going to get to the end. If you go back and try to sort through all that stuff, you're going to be like a dog, you know, bless her heart, chasing her tail. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. You just want to, you can smell the scent. You're on the path. Go! Don't stand here and circle around in circles. Go, follow it, go, go, be bold, be brave. The worst thing that can happen is you write a shitty draft. Has anybody, have any of you ever written a shitty draft? Anybody? Yeah, right. I wrote one last week. Yo, it sucked so bad, I was like, ha ha, the shittiest draft in the world. Yeah, I get competitive. Ha ha, my draft is shittier, it's gonna be shittier than yours. <laughs> yeah, right. See if you can write a really shitty draft. It's okay, no one's hating on you. And if, they do, if somebody does hate on you for writing a shitty draft, fuck them. You don't want to know them. You can un let the unfriendly begin. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay? Just go forward. Right, 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 right. See if you can get to the end by the end of this year. Do you think you can? Yes. Yes. December 31st. It's coming. <laughs> Melissa's making a cutoff on the men from Ops are here. <laughs> it's like it's like the fuzz, man. They're like, oh, like oh, shit, we gotta go. Okay, are we gonna be here next week? Next week. We're gonna be I here next week. You're not gonna be here. And you gonna be here? No. Okay, we'll be here. Matt will be here. Hey, Matt behind the camera. So uh, thanks for being here this week, and uh, thank you all. And we'll be here next week at five o'clock. Yep. Okay. Where are you gonna be? Bye. Bye. Where are you gonna be? Oh, la di da. Do you know what you're doing?